Chris the Bergeron zone. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming um, to the Clinton Senior Center. I'm so glad you could make it for the first of our Elder Law Series. So I would like to introduce attorney Arthur Bergeron from Merrick O'Connell uh, uh, Law Firm. Thank you very thank much, you Tina. Thank you for coming. Um, and I don't think I need this. I think I just need, I'm just okay. Um, My name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an attorney at Merrick O'Connell. Uh, I have uh, been working in elder law for over 35 years. And about five years ago, Myrick asked me to join them as the person there who does that. There were 55 lawyers at Myrick. I'm the guy that does elder law. What's nice about it there is that if you've got a different kind of problem, there's always somebody there who is a specialist as opposed to me as an elder lawyer trying to figure out those other things. So what is elder law about? Um, and what is the purpose of this, these presentations? Really, the goal of elder law is to help people figure out there to help people figure out um, how they're going to make it through the rest of their lives, kind of what the goal of the rest of their lives are, um, how to make sure that you get to being dead without going broke first, because one of the nice things about being an elder, I always like dealing with elders because elders get the fact that they're going to die, right? Your kids don't know they're going to die. You know, you get to a point though where you kind of get that and it's okay. And your goal is not necessarily to not die. Every once in a while, I have a client whose goal is to not die. And I say, well, we'll try to do the estate plan to deal with that. But you know, it might not work. Um, but your goal is to live as well as you can until you die, and, then, and to not go broke before you die. And then after you die, to make sure that whatever you, get, you have left goes to whoever you think is appropriate. Now, the people that I so often talk about when I'm doing these presentations are my friends Frank and Mary. Uh, and their children, Peter, Paul, and Mary, Jr. And, and Frank and Mary have a very simple set of goals. They lo own a house. They want to live in their house until they die. They want to be buried in the backyard. When one of them dies, they want to leave everything to the other. And when the two of them are dead, they want to leave everything to their kids. Does any of that sound familiar, right? So that's kind of a, th so Frank and Mary have, a, and, and th you want to just be kind of thinking about Frank and Mary because as I talk, or when I'm talking, I'm going to be using them as an example a lot. Uh, so Frank and Mary own a house. It's worth about $300,000. They own it jointly. Frank has an IRA worth about one hundred and fifty. dollars They have an annuity worth about $100,000. They have a bank account worth about seventy-five. dollars They're not rich, but they're going to be okay as long as there's nothing catastrophic that happens, as long as nobody needs nursing home care, as long as something really bad doesn't happen. They're going to be okay. Frank has an income of $2,000 a month. He's got $1,500 coming in from Social Security and 500 from a pension. Mary had stayed home all of her life, uh, but she's still getting a Social Security check, which is half of Frank's. So they have a total income of $2,750 a month. Once again, they're going to be okay. They're basically going to be okay. But as Frank and Mary retire, they are, are interested in kind of what to do next and whether there are any services that they really want should be knowing about. Now, the, the, the first place that Frank and Mary should come when they're trying to figure that out, and most importantly, the place where they should be coming if there's no emergency, like before there's an emergency, <laughs> is to the Council on Aging. Um, and I've asked Tina to talk a little bit about the Council on Aging, and I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Sina Zapatis, um, who was kind enough to invite me to come down here to talk about some of these issues. And, I, and I'm introducing her to talk about what the Council on Aging has to offer and kind of, because the Council on Aging should kind of be the first, your window into elder services. Uh, and then I've asked, is it pa Patty? Joyce, jo Joyce Murray. Right. That's good, that's good. <laughs> Joyce, see this is all rehearsed. You can see Joyce Ryan from Montachusett Home, Home Care, which is, uh, let's see, to, to understand Montachusett, you have to understand um, the world of Massachusetts is divided up into regions for purposes of figuring out how the state's dollars get distributed to elders through pr various programs. And the distributors are the ASAPs, the Aging Services Access Points. 
and Montachusett is the ASAP for this area, for the area north of Worcester County, or, or in northern Worcester County. So to the extent that there are state programs um, that you want to access, you've got to be friends with the people at Montachusett. So you ought to kind of know who they are so that you can have some uh, sense of that. Uh, then we then, to the extent that Frank and Mary are slowing down, still feeling great, you know, and active, and, but slowing down, but might need some home care, right, or might want some home care because maybe Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. don't live around here. In my example, Peter is a lawyer and he lives in New York, and Paul uh, is a tech guy and he lives in California, and Mary is the designated daughter. So often people have your basic designated daughter who is in charge of kind of taking care of things, right? And she's around, but in the event that she can't do everything, you may even early on be thinking about home care, so I wanted you to introduce you to some people who do home care. Um, this is not an ad for them, but Shelby Marshall um, is here. She's going to be talking about home care and how that might be relevant. That's the purpose of this first presentation. This is one of a three-part series. And the sec this, is about, this is about staying home when you're slowing down. The second one is going to be about staying home when something bad happens. Someone falls, breaks a hip. There is some, you're starting to lose your keys a lot and somebody's got issues about maybe there's some dementia issues. The third is about staying home when you're frail. Because for many people, while when they get really frail, that's the time when everybody is saying, oh, you need to go to a nursing home. That is the last thing you want to do, especially when you're frail. Nobody wants to be outside of their home when they're frail. So we want to be talking about staying home when you're frail and the options that you have that are available for you to do that. Right? So first, Tina, can, can you talk about the, Clinton, the wonderful Clinton Council on Aging and the great programs that you have? Absolutely. Okay. And I'm going to give you my clicker. Okay. Thank you. And that, that, that advances you. All right? All righty. Good. And, that, and that's your speech. Oh, it is. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Hi there. As you know, I am the new executive director here at the Clinton Council on Aging. I just took over in December. Um, and part of my learning experience was to look and to see exactly what our seniors are looking for. And um, I, I know that the Elder Law Series was something that I found, even my, in my own personal life, when something happens, it's good to be educated and to know uh, what to expect and, and what resources are available to you. And that pretty much is what the Senior Center is all about. It's just connecting you with those resources. Um, you know, we're, we're located right here on High Street for now, but we will be at our new home by the end of the year, we're hoping. Um, which will offer us a lot more than what we can offer you here from this location. Um, but our mission here at the Council on Aging is to serve as the resource center for the community's elders and their caregivers. We provide services and programs that include health, education, nutrition, recreation, transportation, and advo advocacy for our elders. Uh, we do have three full-time positions here at the center, myself, um, we have our administrative assistant and our dispatcher who handles all the uh, van service that the WRTA uh, partners with the senior center to provide to the seniors in town. And we also have our outreach and program manager. We are so fortunate to have a licensed social worker for those of you that don't know who is Donna Joyce Baird. These are some of the services that we provide here at the Council on Aging. Um, SHINE is uh, a program for uh, insurances that helps understand, especially as you're retiring, um, what options are available for the different insurances, if Mass Health or um, different retirement options when that you can come in and meet with a si SHINE representative that can help you understand all of that. Um, we do have many wellness programs. Uh, we do get town funding, but we also get uh, grant monies that come from the Mass Office of Elderly Affairs that allows us to present a lot of our wellness programs that include, um, we have Zumba Gold, we have a Strength and Balancing, we have, um, we're just starting um, some yoga for caregivers, uh, yoga for the elderly that, that might um, help if you have arthritis issues. We're also starting up our Tai Chi in the park. Um, different programs that we provide to help our seniors stay moving, which is so important as you age. Um, our nutrition program and congregate meals together with the um, 
Montechuset Opportunity Council. We're able to provide a hot luncheon here at our facility every day for our seniors that can come in and enjoy that. And we also offer our Meals on Wheels, which is for our inbound seniors who aren't able to come out every day. Um, and we have our volunteers who deliver our Meals on Wheels every day. We also have a tax rebate program. Our town is one of the towns in Massachusetts that take um, advantage of this opportunity. Um, if you meet a cert certain income guideline, you can um, work a certain amount of hours each year to get a discount off of your yearly taxes. Um, these are a few of the other services that are your Council on Aging supports. We have our Youth on Aging, which is a um, uh, collaboration with the Clinton High School and we have some youngsters who um, are exploring the um, aging process with us. Uh, we do have an art class, veteran services, um, fuel assistance, which is on, on a lot of people's mind after the winter that we've had, um, and also our transportation services. Alrighty, and I think it's time for me to give it back to Arthur. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oops, okay. just take that, you keep that. <laughs> Uh, by the way, just a, just a couple of, a couple of no notes on what was just said. There are a number of programs, once again, that they can through which they can introduce you to get you involved with the assessor's office. For example, in addition to um, the, the, the rebate program, there are abatement programs that are available to, to seniors regarding their taxes. I know for Frank and Mary, for a lot of seniors, your biggest expense, your biggest expense is their tax bill. Um, now, if you are, if you uh, have really limited assets, uh, then you are eligible for an abatement on those taxes. And, and most people know about that. What many people don't realize is that if you are over 62, is there anybody here over 62? <laughs> oh, look, right? There are a lot. If, there are if you are 62 or older, actually, um, and, and, and you meet certain income criteria, then uh, you may also be eligible um, to have your taxes deferred until you die. It, it, is, it is like a reverse mortgage. It is you just got a bill that was going to be being paid and you just don't have to pay it until you die or until you sell the house. Now, the, the state set up this program and said that in all communities, unless the communities has set up a higher income number, the income number is $20,000 per year. So Frank and Mary wouldn't qualify for that because their income is too high. However, the state also says that communities individually can increase that number to as much as $30,000 a year. I confess, I don't know Clinton's number. For a couple, it's 50. For a couple, it's $50,000 a year, which allows you for the tax, for the tax deferral. Yeah, so you that's get up to $750 back on your taxes. You no, know, no, that's the abatement. That's, oh but, in, but in addition to that, you can defer the payment of all of your taxes until you die if you meet that income number. <clears throat> I don't know that number. We will. You think sorry, it, you think it is 20 here? Okay, but I, and I'll, we'll confirm that for the next for the next meeting, and just I to make sure you know. Look at anybody on all those tax programs. Oh, and you and that's great. That's great because many senior senior centers don't don't offer that. You can actually help them work through all of that stuff here. That's great. That's great. So that's a brief outline of kind of what the Council on Aging has to offer. And once again, one of the reasons for this program, <laughs> you're all here because you're here, right? Because and may you maybe you've been here before and. But the, the key to so much of this is the seniors that have never come to the senior center because they're like, well, what does that have to do with me? And that's why this, this is going to be on cable so that people can kind of come to realize some of the things that are, that are right here, right? So that's the, a, a kind of a glimpse at the Council on Aging. Um, Joyce Ryan, Joyce Ryan uh, from Montechuset Home Care is now going to talk to you a little bit about the ASAP, the Aging Services Access Point. The, what the services are, what they offer. Once again, they are really, really important players. And they are, and, and you charge how much for your services again? <laughs> Isn't it nothing? Yeah. Something like nothing. Yes, these are, these are like with Tina, these are actually your tax dollars at work, right? These are, these are state funded entities who are there just to provide you with services or to help you figure out what the services are that are available. 